All right, I need to do a video here on this Anderson thing, the Steven Anderson channel shut down, which I said it's not shut down, it's back up. Some real weird stuff. People have been sending me links. What are your thoughts on this and whatever else? Um, years ago, I did an expose of Jack Hiles. And the thing with these Baptists in the Jack Hiles cult, especially, is that they will have scandals come out. And they'll quickly try to bury the scandal and move on. Nothing to see here. They'll ship the guy that was involved in the scandal, the young woman that's, if there's young women involved in fornication or adultery, they'll just kind of shift them around to different churches and, you know, oh, there's nothing going on. Everything's fine. And uh, so you have to kind of stay on. And people have been saying that. Why aren't you exposing this and, and everything else? I have mentioned it. Um, the Anderson uh, scandal with his sons. Um, that there's some definite weird uh, stuff going on there. Not normal. I mean, I've been around Baptists for years and years now. I know about the dirty jokes and a lot of the other stuff that goes on. Um, but what was going on with his sons shows to me that there's a lot deeper problems with the Steven Anderson cult. Uh, teenagers, normal teenagers, don't come up with the kind of stuff that those kids were coming up with. So... Um, Either they've seen the things or it's been done to them or they've been exposed on some level. Okay. Um, so we're going to get into this. This was sent to me a article here. We're going to go over a few things in this article. But uh, this, whoever it is here, I guess, is saying, um, you know, that Anderson's kicking out these families and things. And it said, uh, I'd rather not have those nice language for the new IFB people here like Brian Dillinger, or they like be the one to have a field day with this. I actually believe the preaching of the NIFB, New, New Independent Fundamental Catholic cult here. Um, yeah, well, I don't know who Brian Dillinger is. My name is Brian Denlinger, but, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> but you go up here, and this is the whole thing, this this article here. Um, here's, what, here's just part of the uh, thing from Isaac Anderson. Um, John is another one of, I guess, the, the kids of Anderson. Josh, come to Phoenix. Then we can hire some hookers and have a party in memory of Tupac, I guess, the rap singer. And here you have Isaac Anderson, uh, one of Stephen Anderson's uh, boys, I guess his sold, second oldest son, is choking hookers legal, though. Um, and I've seen a lot of the, the texts and things back between these, these boys and I'm not going to be sharing a lot of that stuff because I don't need to vex my viewers. It's real sick stuff. Here you have uh, Stephen Anderson here. Lee Anderson, middle name. That'll be important later when we get to this Lee Baptist uh, channel. But it says there, I already know it's horrible and I already dealt with it. That's not, There's nothing else I can do. Um, well, your sons are involved in criminal activity. And it's just kind of, well, you know, whatever. You know, they're... They're uh, messing around with minors and, and things and, and saying sexually lewd stuff, trying to get into rape and, and all kinds of other stuff. But uh, there's nothing else I can do. It's, it's, it's dealt with. It's taken care of. Let's move on. Uh -huh. I believe that Steven Anderson deleted his channel, his own channel. I'm going to show you some weird stuff about that, too, here in just a minute. But we talked to all the parents. We talked to the whole church about it on Wednesday night. Everyone involved has been punished, and it's over. There will be zero tolerance of continuing to bring this up, and that is not negotiable. So there's very, very horrible things done by his sons, Anderson's sons, that disqualifies him from preaching. Okay? Let me just show you that real quickly here. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. All right? This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth the good work. Bishop is your Bible word for pastor or preacher. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Uh, very... Uh, simple disqualifying Stephen Anderson. He doesn't even sleep in the same room as his wife. He doesn't even control his own bedroom, much less his own children. All right, and the marriage bed is there in Scripture. Okay, so don't do, oh, you're being perverted. That's part of Scripture. First Corinthians chapter 7. 
There's supposed to be a, a relationship, a physical relationship between a man and his wife, and it's not just to bear children. All right, they're not breeders. Okay, that's Roman Catholic type of stuff. The Roman Catholic Church comes out, and they I have articles people sent it to me about how that you know uh, sex within marriage should only be for producing children. There should never be that for pleasure. Well, that contradicts First Corinthians chapter seven. Okay, um, so now I'm not I'm not being wrong for bringing that up. But this guy here, I've had dealings with this guy over the years. He was a firm uh, Andersonite. Now I guess he's not. But uh, Sean Barnish is his name. And he's talking about, you know, construction jobs that he worked on and the normal quote-unquote talk of guys talking about some girls really hot or whatever else. Yeah, I get it. I used to be part of the same stuff. Uh, you know, teens fornicating in high school. I didn't, but, uh, you know, most of my friends were fornicating regularly. Um, but, uh, you know, talk about sex. Uh, it says, talking about choking a girl during sex isn't. It's not normal, in other words, especially about the fellow church girl. They were writing this stuff to younger girls at the church there. Talk about sex when at the Red Hot Preaching Conference, that's what RHPC stands for, when the families meet up. Talk about hookers at RHPC. Talk about giving the gospel to said hookers just before sex to qualify using church funds. I saw the text. That's what they were saying without getting into a lot of stuff there. Talk about tying up the girls' rape, bondage, sadomasochism. Um, talk about sodomy even as a joke between the boys of two pastors. Uh, no, that's not playground talk for uh, for heathens, yet alone from pastors, kids with church girls, most of them 13 and 14 years old. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been around Baptist pastors. They're, they they homeschool their children a lot of times, or they go to the churches at the Baptist, or the school, excuse me, at, at the Baptist church. They're not into this type of stuff. Where are these boys getting this type of thing? Oh, they're just looking at it online. Okay, uh, where's Anderson at? Is he ruling well his own house? No, he's not. He's covering it up. That's the whole thing here. That's why Anderson ch took his channel down. All right, and he's not. You know, oh, well, YouTube just kicked him off because they finally were they were tired of Stephen Anderson, and so he's trying to to look like a martyr. Oh, look, YouTube took me down. Oh, I just I spoke the truth on such a high level that YouTube took me down. No, you did damage control, Steve. That's what the whole thing is here. You've been a fraud from the from the very beginning. I've been exposing you for years. You're a fraud. I've always known that you were a fraud, right? And your lying and deceit is just insane. But here's the here's the channel here. This is the one that does where Stevie's at right now. Here it is, and uh, this is definitely his channel. Um, you can see there he is. We're going to talk about this interview here in just a little bit, but I want to show you the channels that he likes here, all his little bathic buddies. But look over here, Sanderson 1611. Huh. Um, I thought the channel was deleted. Interesting. Here's the channel, Sanderson 1611, joined December 2nd, 2018. Wait a second. I thought that this, okay, we'll, we'll just go with this for a minute. This channel here, Sanderson1611, somebody took the name after it was kicked off of YouTube. Um, if, it was, if it was shut down for hate speech or whatever else and things, um, why would it show up again? I mean, if it's, a, if it's a hateful organization, YouTube bans it. Why all of a sudden, you know, I could see somebody going along and trying to start a new account to take over. But this says joined December 2nd, 2018. So the only thing I can figure is it was somebody else with another account and they renamed it after Anderson's account. And notice it's not that Anderson is just ignorant. I don't know, you know, about this. It's in his recommended channels on his new channel here on YouTube. He knows about this. But let's see what he says here. I guess what would be the biggest piece of and this is July 28th this is two days ago news involving your church since we last did a live stream which would be of course s Anderson 1611 getting taken down unfortunately now the glass s Anderson 1611 getting taken down no no it's actually not it's right there and it's right there Anderson recommending you know this channel so little uh Benjamin Naim the Jew um, 
funny because they're anti-Jew, but uh, Benjamin Naim's a Jew, but we won't get into that. But uh, oh, it's S. I. Anderson 1611 has been taken down. But according to this, it's been there since uh, December 2nd of 2018. See, what's going on here? But listen to what Anderson says. Last half empty approach to this would be, you know, it was over 10 years of content. I believe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but over 130,000 subscribers amassed over that time period. Optim the optimistic person, right, would think, well, you know what? Yeah, it got taken down, but you got a lot of mileage out of that channel. Thousands of people saved. I don't think so. Including myself, by the way. Thousands of people got saved watching the sermons on there. So uh, there's kind of two ways to look at it. But did you expect that it would happen when it did? The timing of it. Is that something you expected? And what's your reaction to them just hitting the delete button and, and removing the channel? Well, you know, I expected my channel to get deleted. And I'm, I'm actually just surprised that it lasted as long as it did. I mean, that's really the miracle. Because it was up for... 13 years, 135,000 subscribers, over 7,000 videos, literally like 1,500 years of content watched, you know, on the minutes watched section, if you go back all the way to when the channel started. And so the thing that surprised me about it wasn't that the channel got taken down, but how they took down all of my channels in one morning. They took down all of my channels in one morning. Uh, then what's this doing there? And why are you recommending it? And how is it that your channel somehow magically escaped? He talks about that, you know, it doesn't because it doesn't say Sanderson, you know, just continue. Because I always expected that the main channel would get deleted and then I would just fall back on all these other channels that I have because they're on different emails, different phone numbers. But because they all said something like Stephen Anderson or Faithful Word Baptist Church in the name, they all got shut down the same morning. My main channel got shut down. Because I said something like Stephen Anderson, you know, in the, in the name of like this one. Um, it's still there. Still recommended by Anderson. His channel. Okay. Uh, it's kind of weird. And by the way, you said, well, maybe it's spelled a little bit differently. Right there it is. Sanderson 1611. Here's a video I did where my video got taken down because I was exposing his Holocaust denial. And, um. You know, they took my video down and I asked them, why did you do that? And they refused to answer me here on YouTube. Wonderful. But uh, you can see right there it is, Sanderson 1611. This video came out January 7th of this year, 2020. So his channel was still very much active at that point in time. And yet they took down my video, left his channel up, and I'm saying here, they're defend their little hate preacher that the BBC called him out for that. Kind of weird, but let me show you something else that's kind of weird. Right there is the link to their website. Um, see if they have it here. It doesn't have the link to their official website, but uh, we'll go here. FaithfulWordBaptist.org Preaching. And um, if you go down here, We'll just uh, click on, this is July 2020, these are, these are the archives. Man, this morning I preached. Okay, and it links you to Lee Baptist. All right, so that's his new channel there. He's, you know, linking to that. Why that orange thing there disappears, I guess I don't have it on my computer, or I don't know. But if you go back to June 2020, check this out. You click on it. Video unavailable. This video is no longer available because the YouTube account associated with this video has been terminated. Okay, you say, well, see, that lines up. See it? It lines up. Well, it would, but you go down here just to May. Video unavailable. This video is private. Okay, um, how does that work? And it goes back through, and a lot of them are private, and the other ones, you know, sometimes you'll click on ones, and it'll say this channel has been terminated. But this one is private. It's unavailable because it's private. Uh, well, last time I checked, uh, when videos are private, that means that there's an account there associated with the video that's keeping it private. 
So, yeah, really, really weird stuff going on here with this Anderson, Anderson scandal thing. Um, but see, again, why expose it? Why go over this stuff? Very simple. Because this man right here is a lying crook. I mean, the, the deception here. All the stuff from Steven Anderson, it's, it's all been, you know, the Sanderson stuff, it's all been taken down, and, and it's just, YouTube went out like a witch hunt kind of a thing, essentially, and anything with my name, you know, S. Anderson or Steve Anderson or whatever else, it's just gone. Except for, you know, your namesake channel right there, you know. And that, well, that one was created after my channel got taken down. Why does it say join to December 2nd, 2018? Well, it was, somebody else created it. But then they went in and they named it after the channel that was supposed to be taken down by YouTube. So, you know, apparently maybe YouTube is just that dense or something. They're little artificial intelligence robots. Maybe they're that dense that, you know, they can delete somebody for hate speech. And then it just pops back up in, in you know, what, less than a month or something. And, oh, that's fine. You want to name your, your channel after something that was just taken down because of hate speech and community violations. Well, that's fine. That's okay. And you can upload the same guy's videos back onto the channel. It's so weird. These guys, this new IFB cult, the Jack Hiles cult, all this stuff, there's so much weird little interconnectedness, and this one's doing this and that and it. Just a bunch of devils is what they are. But uh, here's another channel, Sanderson1611. This one's with a capital S. Um, and this one puts out, uh, you know, anti-Anderson uh, stuff. But check this out. I thought this was quite interesting. I'd never found this before. But uh, it's showing things, you know, why you should never or not trust anyone who supports Jack Hiles, which I agree with. Passion for God, loyalty, balance. To some, they're just words. But at Hiles Anderson College, they're the found. Interesting. An old Hiles Anderson College ad, and look who's sitting right there, Stephen Anderson. There at Hack. Hmm. And the camera kind of pans past him, kind of just by coincidence. Of course, there's no connections with anything, you know, there or anything. Of course not. But it just kind of pans past Stephen Anderson. There's a lot of weird stuff that goes on, brethren. A whole lot of weird stuff. But what you'll see with the Hiles cult is there's all kinds of deviant sexual behavior that goes on. These guys, they preach this whole thing of you don't have to repent of your sin. There's no changed life that's necessary. There's none of this stuff. And if you preach that stuff, then you're a work salvationist. And the reason that they're doing that is because they live some very, very vile lives. They do some stuff that's just horrible. So I think Steven Anderson, uh, quite frankly, took it down, or maybe the people he works for, or whatever else, they took it down, his channel down, kept it private, let's just make the thing go private, we can bring stuff out later on, I mean, the guy's got so many different channels, and so many different people, in this, and all this involved in this organization, um, and I think that they're having to do damage control, because they are facing litigation at this point in time, because of his sons, one of his sons is not a minor anymore, but he's trying to, you know, get into uh, rape and all kinds of sadistic stuff with minor girls that are going to their church there, which, you know, it's been, you know, it's a basically a form of pedophilia, okay, so Anderson has to get rid of all of his stuff because you can just cut up his sermons and see where he's condemning all this, and, well, they should be executed and everything else, you know, adulterers should be executed, but just uh, not my parents because, you know, well, I don't agree with them, and and whatever, I, you know, fornicators should be, a, you know, executed, oh, well, Donnie Romero, um, well, yeah, he was with prostitutes and doing drugs and gambling with church money, but let's just kind of make him disappear someplace, and, and we'll cover up for all these other guys, and I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. It's the same crew as the Jack Hiles crew, it's the same wicked people. Jack Hiles was still alive today, and they were still doing their scandal, you have to stay on them. You have to just continue to expose these wicked devils. So, um, to those of you out there that have been requesting I make a video about this, like I said, I'm, I don't need to defile the viewers of this channel. I don't need to defile your minds with the, the horrible stuff that 
Steven Anderson's boys were writing and uh, uh, the Aaron Thompson I think was his son was involved in it as well just vile wicked stuff that these guys were writing these kids were writing back and forth and whatever else it's not a normal thing right not normal at all um, and to me it says that there's some some uh, perversion going on in these households uh, but that's what Jack Hiles is you know family was all about um, his son David was just so vile and wicked and uh, it leads to murder it leads to cover up it leads to all kinds of things child abuse um, it's a satanic system and that's why I preach against this stuff so um, if you're in the Stephen Anderson cult um, get away from it uh, it is really bad and and let me just say this too um, if you know stuff that's going on and you're keeping your mouth shut then you're complicit um, God will you will answer to God for that someday you know what's going on and you can come out and, and put an end to this miserable little wretch here and his sham phony ministry and yet you keep quiet about it and you're one of the ones that gets just kind of funneled off to some Baptist church someplace how dare you if you if you profess to have a belief in Jesus Christ and yet you keep your mouth shut and cover up for the sins of these wicked Baptist perverts um, may the wrath of God fall on you you, you are a sick individual to allow the abuse to continue so that is going to be it Thank you for watching.